I'm Mike Turner, Senior Industrial Designer with DG Design, and I'm introducing a series of industry blogs focused on V-Road's usage within a live project environment. Within this episode, I'm going to be talking about V-Red interior setup in order to produce ray traced renderings. In our experience, high quality ray traced interior scenes can be achieved in V-Red, but with our standard license of V-Red design and a fairly regular PC, we found render times are quite slow compared to vehicle exteriors, and that's due largely to the complexity of V-Red having to calculate light within a very enclosed space. However, in more advanced versions of V-Red, there's additional technology which allows you to achieve smoother and faster renderings, which I'll touch on later. So this episode will give some basic tips to help beginners achieve ray trace interior renders with current release of V-Red design, and give an outline of what other software and hardware features are available to help raise your ray trace rendering game. So to begin with, let's talk about geometry. Uh, as per previous tutorials, uh, ensure that your surface normals are all green for the surfaces you want to see, or it can affect the way uh, ray tracing calculates light falling onto that surface. And also make sure you've not got any obvious gaps and open holes in your model, or light will bleed into that interior space where you're not wanting it to. So devising very simple shut-off surfaces in Alias will work to block up the holes. We can suggest for certain interiors where it's appropriate to switch off unseen geometries to let more light in where you can. Uh, but we often find for us doing train interiors where we often need to leave the volume fully enclosed to give that sort of long down carriage view. But it's, it's an option you might have available to you on your project. With our environments we've achieved some really nice results using HDRI images. Uh, typically boosting the exposure uh, maybe two, three, four times. but much depends on the specific HDRI lighting intensity in each image you're using. So feel free to experiment and adjust the exposure values to suit what it is you're working on and the, the geometry constraints that are influencing how much light gets into the scene. As far as camera goes, uh, it, with the cameras we've got available to us in camera settings, we found that adjusting the exposure and contrast values really helps to boost the interior light and obviously improve the image quality. We've got some standard settings that we use as, as a start point, which I'll pop on screen and you can see those. Uh, we, we can recommend these to help get, get the ball rolling on your setup. Um, it can tend to look quite washed out in OpenGL mode when, when you're looking at the interior with these settings, but once you've got ray tracing switched on in real time and the model's updating, things start to look altogether more normal and more balanced. It's worth perhaps pointing out that you can use bookmarks on your cameras to preserve different exposure values when you're working between ray trace mode and OpenGL, if, if it helps. Uh, and again, it's worth mentioning that there is more functionality available within V-Red Pro to adjust your camera f-stops and various other features to improve and fine-tune that light balance and achieve a more photographic effect. As far as light goes, we've found that we really don't need to put specific V-Red lights into our scene, but ensure that any geometries we've modelled that represents actual light surfaces, illumination sources within our data are given uh, an, an incandescence value of one in shader settings uh, and tick so that it emits light when it's ray tracing. Now, whether this light is pure white or whether you want to introduce a hint of colour that looks dance down to you and whatever suits your, your design constraint. Uh, but one thing we found is that you, you can untick the box that says cast shadows onto the environment ground plane. And we found that in many cases that ground plane itself it isn't needed. It's, it's not really visible when you're looking at the interior scene, so you can switch it off. We've also found that while we're still talking about lighting, you can switch the headlight off as well. Um, you don't need that on or it kind of flattens the scene out. It doesn't look, look right when you produce the ray traced images. And for us to assist render setup when we're fine tuning it, we'll quite often use the region render tool within the software, which allows us to test small regions of the image. Uh, and in anti alias mode, it will update a lot quicker rather than trying to update the whole image. This allows us to assess light levels and, uh, and adjust values in real time without worrying about calculating the whole image. Um, now at DG Design, our, our requirement to produce presentation quality ray-traced interior renders 
it's not a constant. It, we're not having to do it all the time. So that's why we chose VRED Design. It gives us a good overall mix of software performance versus price. Uh, there are more advanced versions of, of VRED which include additional features and options designed to improve the speed and the quality of, of ray trace interior rendering. Um, these are probably more suited to companies needing very fast ray trace results almost on a, a daily basis. A daily basis, sorry. Um, this features within the software, um, which is a GPU rendering option, which allows us to use the GPU instead of the CPU. And assuming you've got a powerful um, graphics processor, will assist the speed and accuracy of your render setup. You can make detailed adjustments a lot quicker in real time and assess those adjustments. Um, so again, that can be a big boost if you've got a complex scene that you need to really fine tune. Within uh, VRED Pro, there's also uh, what I call a physical camera, which gives you much greater control over the camera f-stop, shutter speed, and, and ISO settings, which does give you a lot more option to easily sort of fine-tune lens adjustments, suit low light, closed interior environment spaces, and, and also achieve other photographic effects. There's a really powerful tool called Denoiser, which is found in the sort of the rendering general settings which does allow you to clean up the graininess of an image without needing to increase the image sample rate. Of course, raising the image sample rate itself will work and that, that's what we use with uh, VRED Design, the standard license, but it does slow down the time of render. So Denoise is really good at, at getting around that and giving you good results very, very quickly. And there's also the option within VRED Pro to, to play games with the photon tracing and, and set it up so that it's indirect lighting only which allows the photon map to be calculated and adjusted to suit each particular scene, which is really useful when you're fine-tuning the calibration of the scene. Indirect only option allows you to speed up the calculation time enormously, uh, whereas the base license of VRED Design calculates all reflections and light bounces, which does give you, don't get me wrong, a really high quality final image, but it's more complex and slower to VRED to make that calculation. So you get a, a lot more of a speed boost with access to photon tracing and adjusting that. So it's worth actually noting that the VRED software functionality is constantly evolving. The feature distribution may vary based on each year's software release. So rather than just looking at what I'm telling you in this blog, it's worth you checking Autodesk's own release notes for the, for the latest information on the, on the software. You've got to see what features are now included. Um, also worth noting that within Autodesk subscription model, uh, there's options to upgrade your product for, for short or sustained bursts, depending on the usage case and what your needs are at the time. Both as an end user license and also an enterprise business agreement, there's a, a token system in place, so you can maybe access higher levels of ray tracing functionality if and when you need them in support of a particular project. So rather than paying for that functionality all year round, you switch it on on demand when you want to get that quality boost. It's also worth briefly mentioning ongoing hardware and software advances. Autodesk had pointed me to, to look at things such as deep learning super sampling, which is an upscaling technology devised by NVIDIA that runs across their RTX range of graphics processes, which again will upscale rendered image quality and reduce processing time significantly. That's something we've not dabbled with yet, but again, it sounds quite interesting and is a, a means of improving quality and reducing time. It's interesting that there's a lot of parallels and crossovers with technology that has been traditionally used and developed for gaming, but all of which is filtering into the, the visualisation world and it's helping to improve the quality and the pace of the work that we can produce in the professional environment. It's certainly a really exciting time and a constantly evolving situation in terms of hardware and software developments. So yeah, that's a, that's a very, very quick run through, but I, I hope that helps. Uh, thanks for listening. I, ho I hope I was able to give you some sort of practical tips to help get you started on interior ray tracing. And I look forward to catching up with you guys on the next episode. Thanks for listening.